Hello, Church of Living Hope, and thank you for joining us again for Church of Living Hope Online. I'm excited to continue our series this morning on infinitely more and the stories and the life of Jesus and the um, story and of him giving us and baptizing us um, with the Holy Spirit. And I'm just so blessed that even after last Sunday's message, just in my interactions with people, um, interactions with you, uh, the different ones, I could just see how God was really speaking um, to many people uh, about this series. And there's just a real strong um, anointing about what God is doing. And he's doing that more. And so I'm just excited about it. And uh, we spoke last Sunday about the beginning and how God starts with the end in mind, right? And how he's, he prepares us and, and how he leads us to the cross for our salvation, our, our relationship, but he doesn't stop there. And that's, he's like preparing us for that more, that infinitely more that he wants to do in your life. He is that, that preparation this week. We really want to talk about our, our, our participation, our, our joining in with him to do, um, infinitely more new King James says, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Um, one version I looked at said immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. That's just incredible. And, and I love that word immeasurably. Can't even, that's so much higher that God wants to do in your life and my life that you can't be measured. That's crazy. It's awesome. And so I'm excited. It takes preparation, which God's so faithful to prepare you. You say, has God prepared me for infinitely more? Um, he can begin preparing you now. Maybe, maybe you're not a believer and you're not a Christian. He can begin, you can begin a relationship with Jesus today, this morning, and he can begin to prepare you even more, more aggressively, right? Um, in your faith, m more distinctly in your Christian faith, but God has been preparing you your whole life before you're a Christian. God wants to do infinitely more above all that we can ask or think or imagine and so i'm just excited and this week we're talking about more in you the more that's in you the 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 more that god's placed in you that we get to willingly uh, participate with god we get to willingly participate with heaven and see the infinitely more. We're called to this life of infinitely more that, that, than we could have planned or expected. But this requires us to answer the call to be an active participant on God's team. If we want to be a part of the infinitely more, we, we want to be a willing and um, surrendered and active participant with God. And then he'll do it, right? I want us to, again, just read that scripture, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, this is New Living Translation, who is able through his mighty power at work within us, there's that power, that the power of God that's needed, right? 
through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Infinitely more than we ask or think. You know, when we have studied last week about how nothing is an accident uh, with God, He's been preparing. What we're going to see today is that there's really more in you than you even realize. There's more in you that to, to participate with God than you any, can even know. Isn't that amazing? It doesn't matter really what your current esteem of yourself is. Maybe you have a low self-esteem and you just don't think much or whatever. Name it, fill it in there. It doesn't matter. God thinks incredibly of you. You might think, oh, I can't do that. You see the lack in your life. God sees the more. God can do infinitely more. And he's actually, he's actually placed potential inside of you. And I, I know I'm certainly speaking from personal experience, but it's potential that I can't see all the time. I, I just can't see what God sees. He, and I certainly couldn't have seen the Christian life that he's given me before I was a Christian. No. Mm -mm. I, in fact, if people would have said, you're going to be a Christian and, and you're going to live for God and, and you're going to be able to pray with people and you're going to be able to tell people about Jesus and they're going to get saved and all this good stuff, I would have been like, you're crazy, dude. <laughs> and yeah, you're loco. And I, I couldn't see it. We can't see what God wants to do, but he places that, that infinite potential in you. And what we're going to see in today's message, in today's story, that in the beginning phase of Jesus's ministry, one of his actions was to assemble a team, and he assembled a team of unlikely world changers. <laughs> And he assembled in all four Gospels, we see Jesus calling these men, these what we know as the disciples, and what we know as the apostles, the beginners of the church. He called these men to join his team, not because of who they were, but because of the potential that he saw in them, that he placed in them. The infinitely more than they could even see. Look with me in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he set out and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished by the catch of the fish. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. I, I, I love this story and this, this time. Um, 
even in today's message, I think it's so poignant where he found these guys fishing and, you know, rough fishermen, you know, probably, you know, what they say, a mouth like a sailor, you know, <laughs> probably didn't talk super good, you know, notice he didn't find, he didn't go to the temple and to the Levites and to the pro priests, right? To all these educated folk. Um, and God can use educated people. So, <laughs> but just follow me here. He, he, he went to where regular, these regular guys that would turn into extraordinary lives live for him. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. And as we will see in this story, we're going to look at a key character of these men named Simon. And we're going to see this fisherman that was living a life that was less than what it would become. It was going to be so much more, infinitely more than he could imagine, I'm sure. And, but he said yes to Jesus. He participated. He became an active participant. And, and it exploded, right? In verse 4 of, of Luke chapter 5, Jesus tells Peter, this guy, Simon, who becomes Peter, that we're focusing on, he tells Peter to cast his nets out again. You know, it's kind of a funny thing because how God works and how God sees more than what you can see. It's funny because Jesus was actually a carpenter. So it's kind of a funny thought to think that maybe even Peter was like, you're not a fisherman, you know? <laughs> like, I'm the pro here, Jesus, you know? I've been fishing all night, okay? I know how to catch fish. And I know how to do what I'm supposed to do. And Jesus tells Peter that. But then Peter responds with participation and responds correctly. And he says yes to Jesus. He's compelled by Jesus and compelled in obedience to God. So that brings us to the first point that I want to make in today's message is that God is looking for obedience over ability. God is looking for obedience over your ability. You might be watching uh, this message this morning. I'm sure most of you are at home. Maybe you're not at home. Maybe you're out running or exercising and watching this and, and listening to this. Thank you for participating <laughs> and being a live participant to the feed. That really makes a difference when, when you watch it on Sunday morning. I, I think it brings a lot of unity. But, and you may be watching this or, or listening to this and thinking, I am not a world changer, or at least you're thinking that your ability is not there. You might be thinking, I'm just a stay-at-home mom, which stay-at-home moms rule, by the way. I'm just a banker. I'm just a lawyer. I'm just a teacher. I'm just a school bus driver. You fill in the blank. You might be thinking, I don't have a college degree. I don't have a high school degree. I don't have a Bible degree etc. God is not concerned with the plaques on your wall. He's concerned with your heart. 
He's concerned with your obedience and your faith. And Peter could have been like, I've been fishing all night. I really don't care what you say. You know, I'm a professional. But he said yes. And talk about infinitely more <laughs> than they could they could imagine. I mean, they hadn't even caught diddly, and all of a sudden it's bumper crop, right? It's busting the net. And that's what God wants. He wants obedience. And the second point that we want to make this morning is that God calls us outside of our comfort zone to, to, to participate with God and to see that infinitely more. We need to obey. Just do it because he said it, not because you totally get it, right? We need to obey. But I mean, in, in all of this, this, this time that I've served God, obviously a relatively short time compared to many, but in my limited time serving God, it's, it's been outside of people's comfort zone that he calls people to do extraordinary things. It's certainly outside of mine. I'm challenged outside of my comfort zone all the time. <laughs> and we just have to, to say yes. There's many times in the Bible where Peter was called outside of his comfort zone to, to participate with God. Um, on three different occasions, I want us to point out, Peter stepped outside of the, of the boat. Look, at, look with me in Luke chapter 5, verses 10 through 11. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. So that's that first stepping out of the boat that Peter did. He stepped out of the boat to not be a fisherman anymore. He stepped out of a boat to become a follower of Jesus. That's the first step out. Talk about outside of his comfort zone. <laughs> now look with me in this second time that Peter steps out of the boat. In Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through 29. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. Listen to this. I love this. Lord, if it's you... Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out on the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. He got outside of his comfort zone. Yeah, he sank a little bit after that, but he, we see that victory, don't we, where he really obeys God. And, but this third step that he takes out of the boat he takes after he's experienced that, that personal failure of denying Christ. Look at this failure in Luke chapter 22, verses 54 through 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire into the middle of the courtyard, and had sat down together. Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. And a little later, someone else saw him. You're also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. Now remember this denial. 
Peter's denial of Jesus. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken before the rooster crows today. You will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. And so we know that Peter had denied him and experienced that failure. And what did he do? He went immediately back to his comfort zone. Sometimes we can revert. Even after following God, we can revert back to the comfort zone. <laughs> when Jesus is calling us out, the infinitely more is not in the, the, the realm of of comfort and understandability and, and, and being able to be totally comprehended and totally planned. <laughs> I'm all for planning. Organization's awesome. I'm not preaching against those things. I'm talking about your life. Many times we don't know. God doesn't give us everything. He's smarter than that. <laughs> We'd mess it up. <laughs> We don't know what the future, it's, it's not totally understood. God, the infinitely more exists beyond that. And, and here we see Peter going back. Luke, or I'm sorry, John 21, 3. I'm going to fish, Simon Peter told him. And they said, well, we'll go with you. Started fishing again. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> went hunting and the hogs just laughed at me. You can see him go back there. But listen to this in John chapter 21, verse 7. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. The story is they're in the water fishing. Jesus comes. He's resurrected. He comes to the beach there to, and, and starts preparing a meal, really, and calls out to them. John recognizes it's Jesus. So that's the context there. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. That's his third stepping out of the boat. Out of his comfort zone too, for sure. And that brings us to the third point we want to make about participating with God's more. Is that God's purpose still stands even when you've walked away. And, and I want us to really hear that, and I want us to know that, and I want you to hear that this morning. If you've turned the other direction, if you've made a, a, a bad turn, God's purpose still stands. He wants to do more. You can step back out of the comfort zone. You can go towards God fully, and God will do the more in your life. You know, when I think about this, I think about a time in my life where um, I was a young Christian, very young Christian. I thought I knew a lot. <laughs> and it was just a, a fun, fun time though, being a, a fresh believer and learning more and more about Jesus and, and interacting with him. and. There was an opportunity for me to go on a missions trip to Russia, really. And I was young, broke. I mean, fill in the blank there. They wanted like $500 just to get a visa. I barely had that. Uh, almost went to apply for the visa. Then I was, I was told almost for sure they will deny you it was just the political climate of the day just 
various factors that were there. You, you know, I have a criminal history, and so that was a factor. And they said, no, they, they're not going to let you have a visa. And I remember feeling very crushed. And it was just like, I, I just almost knew that that was God. And, and it was just like shot down, you know. And I know that, you know, at the time, I could have just let that be the end of my, um, of my adventure with God. You know, I was in Bible college. Um, I had moved to the small Bible college in Lindale, Texas, and I was just on this adventure with God. And and it was very exciting, um, but I I could have just stopped and just gone back to work or whatever I thought was comfortable. But it was interesting how actually God used that to prepare me because then that whole thing crumbled and Pastor Joe said that might have fallen through, but there's an opportunity for you to go to Romania. Do you want to consider that? Um... It's so interesting how God does prepare you because initially, initially, I accepted to go to Romania because it was almost Russia. (laughs) And I had to participate. The tickets were expensive. They're still expensive. There's just, there were costs for the trip, costs for my lodging, for food. There's just all this stuff. I was broke. Crazy thing is, I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate a little bit. God asked me to quit my job. I was working at Subway Sandwiches and God told me, you'll never make enough sandwiches to pay for what I want you to do and I was like oh my goodness I quit subway quit the sandwich life and God I sent out some newsletters step of faith money just started pouring in out of nowhere it was weird almost I had more money when I came back from the mission trip, then I (laughs) going on the mission trip, paid for my ticket, all that and the chips included. And ended up meeting Krista on top of everything else, my future wife. (sighs) Talk about infinitely more. And I had to participate with God. I had to step out in faith. I had to say, you know what? I'll say yes. And I'm glad I did. (laughs) And so I just encourage you here as we're coming to the the close, I want to encourage you. It's not too late. It, It does take obedience more than your ability it will push you outside of your comfort zone maybe you've gone before and and you've kind of fallen away or you're kind of back and forth god's purpose still does stand even when you've when you've missed it and i want to encourage you this morning that to surrender totally to god if you had joined um the wednesday night bible study you would have uh, have heard me speaking about being sold out for God, being sold out to experience the infinitely more, like Barnabas and others that sold all their possessions and, and they were all in. I want to encourage you this morning. I'll, we're going to have a... a, a video that that plays directly after this video if you 
If you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you've never done that, I want you to, to just hang here and listen to this video and pray and, and contact us. And, and we want to help you in your walk with Christ. So maybe it starts there for you. Maybe, maybe you need to start a relationship with Jesus to see the infinitely more. But maybe you're just a believer that's living in your comfort zone. And when God's already been speaking to you way before I started talking about getting outside of your comfort zone, I just want you to know that you can obey God and you will see the infinitely more that He wants to do. Maybe God's spoken to you explicitly to walk away from something and to stop doing something, to repent and to commit, to allow God to reinstate His plan and His purpose in your life, you can do that right now. And I want you to respond. I want you to respond to the Holy Spirit. I want you to begin to pray right now, even before I'm about to pray. But I just want you to bow your head right now. I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to say, yes, God, I will obey you, God. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm going outside of my comfort zone. It's not doesn't make a lot of sense. But I believe that you can do infinitely more. Let me let me pray for us as we close. Lord, I just thank you that you want to do to do amazing things in your church. You want to do amazing things in people's lives that are listening to this and my life as I'm listening to you. Lord, you want to do miracles in the earth. You want to do healings in, in, in the world, not just in the church, but in the streets and in, in unbelievers' life at people's workplaces. Lord, you want to do infinitely more. And I just pray for people right now. I just pray for us. Lord, I pray that we would be obedient to God, that we would overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We'd be those that overcame, that overcame the devil, the enemy that tries to just stick us in, in the lack of abundance, the, the finite, not the more. And I just pray, Lord, I pray that we could willingly um, surrender, willingly sell out for you, Lord, and that we would put our full trust in you. Lord, we just do that right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. We just do that right now with our life. We do that in a practical way too, not just in, a, in an idea type way of I'm going to give my life, but there's practical steps that you give us. Lord, I, I pray we would we would put those into action where we surrender our life totally to you and we walk your way, Lord, and we'd see the infinitely more. I just bless you, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. I pray that you would um, stay as soon as we cut from here. We're going to have a message. If you'd like to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, thank you again for joining us. I look forward to next time. God bless.